Now, we saw this week the second dice with death Donald Trump has had in just a few months. As I'm sure you know, the 45th President of the United States, who of course wants to be the 47th President, was playing a round of golf at his course in West Palm Beach in Florida on Sunday afternoon when the Secret Service found a man hiding in the bushes 400 metres away from Trump with an AK-47 style assault rifle. They fired multiple rounds at Ryan Routh before he fled the scene and he was eventually stopped and arrested about 72 kilometres away. After being shot in the ear in Butler, Pennsylvania a little more than two months ago, he was another man who appeared to be ready to assassinate the Republican presidential candidate. And you'd think after last time that the media would be smart enough to tone down the anti-Trump rhetoric. The bloke nearly got shot again. But no, the leftist media in the US, in this case the MSNBC, was saying it was Trump who needed to tone down the rhetoric. But do you expect to hear anything from the Trump campaign about toning down the rhetoric, toning down the violence, or would that be atypical of uh, the former president? Well, Alex, remember back to the assassination attempt on President Trump's life and how, you know, there was talk of a new tone and then the, re the Republican convention was, by Trumpian standards, muted. And it did seem like he was, you know, just trying to take it down a few notches. But then by the end of his convention speech, you know, we were kind of back to where uh, we started. So I mean, they're effectively victim-blaming. He came within 400 metres of a lunatic hidden in the bushes with an assault rifle, and it's apparently his job to calm things down. Here are a few more examples of the media shifting the blame to Trump for someone apparently wanting to shoot him. Donald Trump is blaming Democrats for inflaming political rhetoric, but the former president's own words seem to be increasing the threat of political violence in Springfield, Ohio. That's where a false and ugly accusation against Haitians, thousands of whom are legal permanent residents, is impacting everyday life. This apparent assassination attempt comes amid increasingly fierce rhetoric on the campaign trail itself. Mr. Trump, his running mate J.D. Vance, continue to make baseless claims about Haitian immigrants in Ohio. You can't say that threats, bomb threats on uh, Springfield, Ohio, schools and hospitals have nothing to do with Trump and the Trump campaign. You can't say Trump has no responsibility for an attack on Paul Pelosi, no responsibility for Jan 6, no responsibility for threats against election workers, no responsibility for threats against Dr. Fauci and health administrators. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So uh, the, the calls to tone down um, are good, but they need to come from inside the House. I mean, for heaven's sake. And the post-mortem continued in print with the leftist media rubbishing the idea that inflammatory rhetoric against Trump might incite someone to want to kill him. NBC Online, quote, Trump dispenses with unity and blames Democrats after apparent second assassination attempt. The Washington Post, quote, Trump without evidence blames rhetoric of Biden-Harris for possible assassination attempt. MSNBC Online, quote, the problems with Trump blaming Dems for apparent assassination attempt. USA Today, quote, after possible assassination attempt, Trump dec decries, sorry, rhetoric. Spare me the sanctimony. USA Today again, quote, Trump fundraisers blames Biden and Harris without evidence in aftermath of second assassination attempt. Here in Australia, the Sydney Morning Herald, quote, without evidence, Trump blames Biden and Harris for apparent assassination attempt. CNN Online, quote, headline, Trump pivots from second apparent assassination attempt to more incendiary claims. Lead, ex-president Donald Trump responded to a second apparent assassination attempt that he blames on incendiary political rhetoric by inflaming the situation even more. The Atlantic, quote, Donald Trump is using another possible attempt on his life to inflame tensions in America, which is one more reason he should never be president again. The Los Angeles Times, quote, Trump assassination attempts are just the beginning. Imagine what is coming after the election. It then goes on to say in the article, 
If Vice President Kamala Harris wins the election in November, there is serious concern over violence waged by Trump supporters who may believe that the election was rigged or stolen. It continues, if Trump is elected, many expect a visceral reaction from segments of the far left, including some who may resort to violence. May is doing some heavy lifting there, but after a brief charting of the left, it goes on. Trump's election could also embolden any followers prone to violence, which could fuel more terrorism against immigrants, people of colour, women, LGBTQ plus people and others. How can the media possibly claim that there is no evidence that the rhetoric of Biden and Harris could encourage assassination attempts against Trump? They have both repeatedly called him a threat to democracy. Biden said he should be put in a bullseye. I mean, if you think he is a threat to the very fabric of the governance of the United States, then why wouldn't you want to have the man killed? And Rachel Maddow had uh, Hillary Clinton on MSNBC the next day to say that Trump was a demagogue and a threat to the world. Uh, you know, journalists uh, should, you know, really try to achieve objectivity. And by that, he said, I mean, they should cover the object. Well, the object in this case is Donald Trump, uh, his demagoguery, his uh, danger to our country and the world, and stick with it. You know, they were merciless about uh, what they saw as uh, President Biden's, uh, you know, problems uh, in the debate. They never learn. But I think the point is that they don't want to learn because it's deliberate. They would rather see Trump dead than in office again. So why would they tone down the rhetoric? Joining me on the show this week is the Australian's media writer Sophie Ellsworth and writer and broadcaster Kel Richards. Kel, you know, it's just so egregious, the examples from the, the American media. I could have gone on. That's only a handful of the examples that I uh, managed to scrounge up this week. But the, the leftist media in America wants the man dead, it would seem, and will do everything to shift the blame for people wanting to kill him. 90% of the American media have decided on their candidate they want elected to the White House and everything, every single journalistic value has been thrown out the window in order to pursue their campaign to get Kamala Harris into the White House. The things we were hearing were bizarre. On Wolf Blitz's program on CNN, a woman wanted to blame Trump for the attack on Nancy Pelosi's husband. Now, A, that that's without evidence, if you want to talk about yes. things like that. There's no evidence for that at all. It was a madman who did that. Uh, there's never been any suggestion that had anything to do with Trump, except now. Suddenly, we want to blame Trump for everything, including things in the past. And you quoted that line, which is the most important line. There was three or four of the newspaper lines you quoted, without evidence, without yes. evidence. I'll give you the evidence. The ipsuma verba of Joe Biden, he is a threat to democracy, was quoted word for word by Ryan Ralph in his post online. So Ryan Ralph, the alleged attempted assassin, quoted Joe Biden word for word, this is why he has to be assassinated. I mean, why can't they see the evidence in front of their eyes? Oh, well, I think they can see the evidence, Kel, but the, the point, Sophie, is that they're, they're, they're just deliberately ignoring the evidence in front of them to achieve an end. And, and surely when you're reporting on something like this, you know, we, we are talking about uh, twice in just over two months that someone has attempted to or appeared to attempt to kill the former President of the United States. Surely the media in the US and more broadly has a responsibility to tone things down a bit to try to prevent these things from happening. It almost seems like they're encouraging it. Well, Caleb, I think these uh, journalists, supposed journalists, need to be careful and cautious in the language they use. Uh, some of those clips that you have shown there to the viewers appear to be more along the opinion articles uh, than straight news reports. Mm. And they need to work out, uh, are they giving a straight news report or are they trying to give a straight news report but really making an opinion article? And this is where uh, I think the public loses trust in the media because it's badged up as news, but it's not really news. Uh, it can almost turn into propaganda. 